Hallelujah and hello family. Thank you for stopping by and coming by and spending your time um, at this with this channel or with me. Um, I want to just say today again, I hope you are doing well through this season and you are doing um, much better day by day. So today we're going to jump right in and we're going to start with Romans chapter 15. I invite you to do Bible study with me. You are going to need a few tools. So um, other than time, and again, I suggest that if you don't have the entire time, you can just break this up over a period of days um, during the week. So you can really just take that time and soak in God's word. Um, of course, you can use your Bible app or you can grab your highlighters, your journals, pens, pencils. If you like to do digital Bible journaling, which I do, you can even grab your tablet or your iPad. Now we're going to be using the uh, expanded Bible translation, and you can find this on Amazon. And you can just actually print out what the chapter that you need. You can actually print that from BibleGateway.com. So the two links are shown there. So you can just jump right in and do it. And then also you can uh, actually scan the QR code that I'm going to provide on this video. So either way, works. So today we're going to take a look at what I call scripturally focused breathing. And you can find this information on the word, the Ruach on gotquestions.org. And again, if you haven't heard my previous videos, it is just a nice word that indicates the word wind or breath or the spirit of God. Um, the corresponding Greek word is pneuma. If you want to write that down, it's P-N-E-U-M-A. And both of these words are commonly used um, in passages to refer to the Holy Spirit. And so if you go back to Genesis 1 and 2, you'll see where it says the Spirit of God or the Ruach Elohim was hovering over the waters. And then I like Genesis 6, 17, where it's actually translated as the breath of life. And so today we're reminded of that. As we breathe in, we know we're sustained by the Almighty. His breath in us is what allows us to live, move, and have our being. So with that, we're going to do what, um, take our, a minute and just settle our mind. This is good practice that you can use when you are trying to just settle your mind and your Bible study and take that time to just relax and remind the brain that you, you are actually existing because of God. So with that said, we're going to focus on Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, where it states, Trust in Jehovah with all thy heart, and lean not upon thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. So we're going to focus on that scripture and inhale for three, through your nostrils. And then exhale, I usually take about seven through my nostrils. And then we're going to read it again, but each time we'll read it slower and slower. So this time, trust in Jehovah with all thy heart and lean not upon thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. Focus on that. Breathe in. Exhale slowly. Now this time, I want you to look at this for a moment and see what words are, are being emphasized that the Holy Spirit is jumping out at you. And so when you breathe in this next, next time, I want you to focus on those words or phrases. So here we go. Trust in Jehovah with all thy heart and lean not upon thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct thy path. Now this time when you breathe in, think of those words and phrases. Breathe in. Exhale. Now last time, really slow, focus in and let the Holy Spirit, his word is alive and powerful, speak to you right now. Trust in Jehovah with all thy heart 
and lean not upon thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct thy paths. So with that said, we just invite the Holy Spirit today to come in this Bible study and reveal his word and give us insight and revelation. We cannot do it without his word, without his power and without his revelation. And today we're going to read the Lord's prayer together. Just as a good reminder, when Jesus, when the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray. And in one version, it says in one chapter, I'm sorry, it says pray in this manner. And then in another chapter, it says when you pray, say. So let's say this together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen and then in some uh, versions and chapters it says for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen So just like we prepare our minds for Bible study, it's always good to just sit down and, you know, invite God and and he's already in you. But we just want to take a moment to worship him. And so we hear so often that term worship. But what is biblically, how do we define worship? And so there's one word that you see there, shaka, and that is the Strong's entry number, the Hebrew word, 7812. And they define it as bow or to bow down, okay, or obscience or reverence or fall down or to stoop or to crouch. And so that when we saw that word in some places in the Hebrew scriptures in the Old Testament, it's defined in that manner. So let's look at what it says, how it's defined in the New Testament. New Testament, same thing, do reverence. And so I like this. It says from prose, which means towards, and this other word, K-U-N-E-O, which means to kiss. So if you were to combine that, you could say to kiss towards. And that's the most frequently used word for worship. It is used as an act of homage or reverence. And so again, we kiss toward God when we worship him and then we take our body, right? We offer it as a a living sacrifice and we can bow down and we can kneel and we can stoop and we can lie prostrate. And so we're reminded of this in Psalm 29 and verse two, where it says, give to Jehovah the glory of his name, worship Jehovah in the majesty of holiness. And so with that said, I want you to join me. Go ahead and check out Spotify, Pandora or something, one of your music apps, Apple Music, and see if you can find this version. It's called The Goodness of God by Bethel Music. And so we're going to just actually sing just a few lines together for sake of time. But you can just play this in the background and be reminded of how good God truly is. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able who oh, I will sing of the goodness Oh God, 
Come on and sing that with me one more time. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Just take a moment right there and just worship him and think about the goodness. Okay, so as usual, we're reminding ourselves on why we do Bible study and why this is important. And it's rooted in John chapter 17, verse 3, where it states, And this is eternal life. It means to know, to perceive, to recognize, to become acquainted with and understand you, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. So that is why we do what we do. We don't do it, you know, to get brownie points at church or with our community. We do it because we. this is our way, his instructions, his manual, his love letter to us for us to get to know him. And then I want us to also look at Acts 8, 29 and 32. I just ran across this, you know, with my family uh, recently, and it was just a good reminder. And I figured this is a good way to to remind us of what what we do and why we do what we do. In Acts 8, it says, Philip received another prompting from the Holy Spirit. And then it says, the Holy Spirit, go over to the chariot and climb on board. Verse 30, so he started running until he was even with the chariot. Philip heard the Ethiopian reading aloud and recognized the words from the prophet Isaiah. And then Philip says, do you understand the meaning of what you're reading? The, the Ethiopian, how can I understand it unless I have a mentor? Then he invited Philip to sit in the chariot. And here's the passage he was reading from the Hebrew scriptures. And so you can finish that on your own. But hey, we read, we study, we do all that we do because we don't know when God is going to position an Ethiopian eunuch in our lives. And we need to open up the word. And he wants to, by the power of his spirit, to reveal words to us or to help us guide someone else in understanding his word why? So that they can understand and get to know God better day by day. And so lastly, we also do this to be like the Bereans. It says they would reason together and they would search the scriptures to see what they heard was true. So we have our reasons and the best part is to learn about the different attributes of God and who he is. And so today, or for this week, we're going to focus on L, and it kind of sounds like hug a doll, you know, like hug a doll, but it's not that. Just say hug a doll. And this is from the 100 Names of God Daily Devotion by Christopher Hudson. And so we get a chance to see the great God in, in the scriptures in Deuteronomy 10, verse 17. For Jehovah your God, he is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, the fearful God who does not lift up faces nor take a bribe. You know, that first part, the Jehovah God, the God of 
of gods, the Lord of lords, the great. I had to say that again because it's so, so powerful. So let's jump right in. But before we do, we're going to allow you to um, first scan this QR code. Remember, you can go on a Bible gateway. You can actually eventually order the Expandable Bible Bible translation if you wanted to. Um, But this actual sheet that you can scan, uh, purposely, there are a bunch of lines, spaces that are left in between. So you can jot down your questions, your journal, you can draw um, any photos that you would like to draw to remind you. There's a process called inductive Bible study. You just find out what works for you. Okay, so that'll give you a chance. You can pause the video if you need to and then jump back in and we're going to listen to the uh, this chapter, Romans chapter 15. But we're going to turn for a moment from the expanded Bible and we're going to listen to it out of the voice translation. So let's jump back in together after you listen to this. So now what? We who are strong are not just to satisfy our own desires. We are called to carry the weaknesses of those who are not strong. Each of us must strive to please our neighbors, pursuing their welfare so they will become strong. The anointed one himself is our model for this kind of living, for he did not live to please himself. And as the scriptures declared, when they insult you, they insult me. You see, everything written in the days of old was recorded to give us instruction for living. We find encouragement through the scriptures and a call to perseverance that will produce hopeful living. I pray that our God, who calls you and gives you perseverance and encouragement, will join all of you together to share one mind according to Jesus the anointed. In this unity, you will share one voice as you glorify the one true God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, our liberating King. So accept one another in the same way the anointed has accepted you so that God will get the praise he is due. For, as I am fond of saying, the anointed one has become a servant of the Jews in order to demonstrate God's truth. Effectively, this confirms the promises he made to our ancestors and causes the non-Jewish nations to glorify God for his mercy. As the scriptures say, For this, I will praise you among the nations and sing praises to your name. Again, the scriptures say, nations celebrate with his covenant people. And again, praise the Lord, all nations. Raise your voices, all people. Let your praises flow to God. Again, Isaiah says, then the root of Jesse will emerge. He rises to rule all the peoples of the world who come to him for guidance and direction. In him, they place their hope. I pray that God, the source of all hope, will infuse your lives with an abundance of joy and peace in the midst of your faith so that your hope will overflow through the power of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, I am ultimately confident that you are full of goodness, knowledge, and the ability to help and instruct one another. I have written to you with unflinching honesty on many topics because I do not want you to ever lose sight of the tremendous grace God has given me. His grace makes me who I am, a minister of the anointed one, Jesus called to serve the nations. Though Paul's churches are made up of Jews and non-Jews, Paul's special calling is to be God's emissary to the nations beyond Israel, known as the Gentiles. The good news of God is the focus of my priestly work. In effect, these nations have become an offering to God, totally acceptable, indeed made holy by the work of the Holy Spirit. So in Jesus, the anointed one, I have reason to celebrate the things I do for God. I don't want to be presumptuous, so I will restrict myself to what the anointed has accomplished through my words and actions, which has culminated in the obedience of the nations. My words and actions have been rooted in spirit-empowered signs and miracles. The upshot is this. 
I have been able to preach the good news of the anointed one in city after city from Jerusalem all the way around the Mediterranean to a Lycricum. I have dreamed of preaching the gospel in places where no one has ever heard of the anointed so that I do not build on a foundation laid by anyone else. But as the scriptures say, they will see him even though they've never been told about him. They will understand even though they have never heard of him because of many issues. I have not been able to visit you in the city of Rome. But my time to serve those here is coming to an end. There is no room left for me in this region, and I have longed to come to you for many years. So I plan to visit you on my journey to Spain. I am hoping that I will not only see you face to face, but that you will assist me in the journey west after I enjoyed our time together. But right now, I must make the journey to Jerusalem to serve the saints there. Those in Macedonia and Achaia decided it was a good idea to share their funds to help the poor among the saints in Jerusalem. I must tell you that they were thrilled to be able to help. They realized that they are indebted to their believers in Jerusalem. If the nations share in the Jews' spiritual goods, then it's only right that they minister back to them in material goods. When this work is complete and the funds we collected are delivered, I will make my way to Spain through your grand city of Rome and enjoy some of your hospitality. I'm sure that when I come to you, I will come as a blessing and as one fully blessed by the anointed one. My brothers and sisters, I urgently plead with you by the name of our Lord Jesus, the anointed, and by the love of the spirit to join together with me in your prayers to God for my success in these next endeavors. Pray that I will be rescued from those who deny and persecute the faith in Judea and that my service in Jerusalem will meet the approval of all saints there. If that happens, then my journey to you will be filled with joy. And if God wills, I can rest and be refreshed in your presence. I pray the God of all peace will be with you all. Amen. Okay, so as a reminder, we just listened to that in the voice translation, but to study, we're going to use the expanded Bible. So hopefully you had a chance to get all your materials ready and you're ready to dive right in. We're just going to allow the Holy Spirit to just take us on this journey and that we agree together that we will never be the same. We will allow the scriptures to speak to us. Now, remember, there are two ways, well, two two of many ways to study the Bible, but one is called a topical Bible study. And then another is when we just read through through the scriptures, you know, um, we, we it's an exposition of the scriptures. We read it as is in full context, and then we allow the scriptures. We draw out lessons from those scriptures that are applicable today. So, as a quick reminder, we're going to look at where do we end in Romans 14. Um, What was Paul? Because remember, these are not divided into chapters. Originally, they just read as one long letter. So here's a reminder from chapter 14. Paul says he is free to eat, but he is not free to injure another in what he eats. Personal freedom must always give way to corporate responsibility. To put it another way, the gospel of love demands that we surrender individual liberties for the sake of our brothers and sisters. We see this demonstrated powerfully in the example of Jesus, who gave up his life and freedom for the sake of the world. When we live by this ethic, we create a community marked by warmth and hospitality. Food, drink, and holidays may well be personal options within the kingdom, but justice, peace, and joy are communal essentials for life 
in the kingdom. So you could find that note at the beginning of chapter 15, really, from the voice translation. So it's always good if you have your journal, your paper, your Bible, your notebook to actually write an overview. And again, different resources are already available to you on BibleGateway.com as well as other uh, websites. And so here you can pause the video and jot this down. But here's an overview from the Disciples Literal New Testament. And again, you can find that on Amazon. So chapter 15, it states, be pleasing your neighbor for even Christ didn't please himself as it is written. First section we're going to read for scripture was given, was written to give us hope as we endure in this next section. May God help you all to think the same thing to his glory. And then therefore accept one another as Christ has accepted you both Jew and Gentile. And then the next section we'll look at is peace and joy to you all. Brothers, I wrote to you as a minister of Christ to the Gentiles serving the gospel. And then Paul writes, my ministry of the gospel to Gentiles who have not heard is my boast and my ambition. And he again writes, pursuing this ministry, I hope to come to you in the, on the way to Spain. And then the last section's in Romans chapter 15. But first, I'm going to Jerusalem, taking a contribution to the poor saints there. And lastly, my one of my favorite sections, pray for me, brothers. All right. So if you're ready, we are going to uh, jump right in. Um, and again, we're just going line by line, precept by precept. In pink, you will actually see the items or the phrases that the Holy Spirit uh, emphasized for me. And so we get a chance to just use our highlighters in our Bibles or the printout that you actually, if you had a chance to print out this chapter on Bible Gateway, you can use that. So let's jump right in. Let me show you or explain to you in this chapter or in this version of the Bible, the expanded Bible, you'll see letters and you'll see things in parentheses. So when you see the capital L in that first line near strong, that means that's if we were to translate this literally, that's the word that you could put in place of the phrase right or word right after the bullet. And then if you look at the next uh, paragraph or the next sentence where you see that bracket where it says bear with, be patient with, that is that Bible's way of giving you different synonyms to read the same sentence. And then if you continue in verse 15, you see where you see failings and struggles. That's a synonym for weaknesses. And then let's just keep going down. Um, look at verse three. You see another capital L. You see another capital L uh, in verse four. So I'll explain the other letters as we go. So let's just jump right in. We who are strong in faith, or literally, you'll just see strong in the literal translation, maybe like a King James, you would just see strong. So we who are strong in faith, should help. What does that mean? Bear with, be patient with the weak with their weaknesses. Another word for weakness is failings or struggles and not please only ourselves. Let each of us please our neighbors for their good to help them be stronger in their faith. So in other words, to edify them, to build them up. And then verse three, when we would, if we were to read this in the King James, you would see the word literally translated from the text for, but this translation starts with even Christ did not live to please himself. It was as the scriptures said, when people insult you, it hurts me. Now, if we were to read this in the King James, it would say the insults of those who insulted you have fallen on me. And that comes from Psalm chapter 69, verse 9. And then verse 4, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. The scriptures give us patience or endurance and encouragement so that we can have hope. Okay, so our first highlight, let's highlight that 
together, strong in faith. What do you think about when you hear that phrase, strong in faith? You know, what does that mean if you were to just really think about your own faith and where you are and where I am? We all have to evaluate that. And then look at the next phrase, highlight with me and not please only ourselves. So this statement by Paul, it's important. We need to develop in our faith and we do need to get stronger, but we also need to help our other brothers and sisters grow and become strong as well. Then we are not only pleasing ourselves. So let's continue. Highlight. Um actually verse two, you can even highlight, let uh, each of us please our neighbors for their good. Why? To help them be stronger in the faith. And so this is why I like the um, expanded Bible, because sometimes you run across words that you don't use in everyday language, and it just gives us a, a amplification. The Amplified Bible will do that too. It says to edify them, you know, to build them up. And then lastly, I highlight it out of this section, but remember, you can highlight more than this, but go ahead and highlight the scriptures give us patience or in other words, endurance and encouragement. So even as you do your Bible study, you could sit down and say, God, I know according to your word in Romans 15, the apostle Paul said that the scriptures give me patience endurance and they give me encouragement. So God, I receive that right now as I study your word. So that's where, that's how we actually make the word applicable to our everyday lives. So let's continue reading with verse five. May the patience and encouragement that comes or come from God. Now, again, the literal translation would read the God of patience and encouragement. Okay, let's continue. Allow you to live in harmony with each other the way Christ Jesus wants or grant you the same attitude with each other that Christ Jesus had. Verse six, then the literal translation would read so that then you will all you will all be joined together and literal translation together with one voice or mouth. You will give glory to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 7, accept each other or accept each another just as Christ accepted you. This will bring glory to God or in other words, or in this way, Christ brought glory to God. The literal translation would read to the glory of God. Verse 8, for or I tell you that Christ became a servant of the Jews, or in other words, you'll see that term circumcised, to show or confirm that God's promises to the Jewish ancestors, you'll see the term patriarchs or fathers are true. So let's just take a look at that. Um, When you highlight, go ahead and highlight verse Five, right after the bullet where you see allow you to live in harmony with each other. So I wrote this while I was studying. It is important that the body of Christ do all to maintain unity and to abhor a spirit of division. A mindset of harmony is important for Christian unity. That's a quote that you'll find. Another great plug is called the filament app if you want to jump in on your Apple store or Google Play store and find that. But listen to that quote again. A mindset of harmony is important for Christian unity. It is only by accepting and agreeing with what is written that man can be men can be like-minded. So in other words, we need the Bible as we read together. That's how we become like-minded. That's how we live in harmony with one another. Let me continue with this quote. If saints would learn to leave off all doubtful disputations, become unified on the point of not judging each other regarding things not written and agree on things that are written, there would be perfect unity. That's powerful. That's from the Dakes Bible. So as we come together and what we're doing right now, what helps us? to live in harmony with each other is we got to read God's word so that we renew our minds so that we can be like-minded. 
You know, we're not robots, but we will come to a point where we agree on certain things. All right, let's continue with verse nine. And he also did this, who, who, Jesus, so that the Gentiles could give glory to God for the mercy he gives to them. You'll read this literally. And if we were to see this as a literal translation, it would read just as. But in this translation, it is written in the scriptures. Here's the quote. So I will praise or confess you among the Gentiles. Another word for Gentiles is nations. Anyone who's not Jewish by birth. I will sing praises or psalms to your name. Close quote. So Paul was writing and he's using, he's making his case again for the Gentiles. Because look at verse nine. He said he did this. He also did this so that the Gentiles. So then Paul goes in and he uses Psalms 1849 to make his point that that is regarding the Gentiles. Then he goes, if you look at verse 10, it says the scripture also. And again, again, it says, be happy. Or in other words, rejoice, celebrate you Gentile nations together with his people. That's found in Deuteronomy 32, 43. And then there's uh, another good cross reference that you can write down in your journal or Bible. Samuel 22, verse 50. And it reads, therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. And then you have also rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and render vengeance to his adversaries. He will provide atonement for his land and his people. Man, that's powerful. uh, They're letting us know, the Bible's letting us know what Christ accomplish. And so Paul, let's continue. He's going to continue to make his case pulling from the Hebrew scriptures. He's going to state a scripture in verse 11. He's going to state another scripture in verse 12. So let's go ahead and read that together. Again, the scripture says, or, and again, all you Gentiles, nations, praise the Lord, All you people sing praises to him. That is from Psalms 117, verse 1. And then verse 12, Paul writes again. And again, Isaiah says, a new king king will come from the family of Jesse. Here's the actual comment made in this Bible. The root of Jesse will come or sprout. Or here's the comment. Jesse was the father of King David. So when you read that, a new king will come from the family of Jesse. Or when you see the word, the root of Jesse, well, who was Jesse? Jesse was the father of King David. So let's continue. He will come or rise up to rule over the Gentiles and they will have hope because of or put their hope in him. That's all quoted from Isaiah 11, verse 10, okay? And then verse 13, I pray that the God who gives hope, man, will fill you with much, or literally you'll see the word all, joy and peace while you trust or because you trust through your faith in him. My goodness. So if we look at verse 11, highlight, just highlight all of that with me. Highlight in verse 11, praise the Lord. Highlight, sing praises to him. Highlight God who gives hope. Highlight joy and peace. And lastly, through your faith in him. So if you need to pause the video, you can go ahead and do that. And so it is still important. For us in 2021, for us to praise the Lord and to sing praises to him. Um, There's one thing that you can research. I don't want to go into it because I did not, I've not researched it fully, but it's called the prayer of Kaddish, K-A-D-D-I-S-H. Excuse me if I'm not pronouncing that right. You can look that up in your own time. I don't want to go into it um, today, but I thought of that or the Holy Spirit made me think of it when I think of praising God and extolling and exalting his 
mighty name. And so we're just reminded in this section by Paul, even though he's making a point. Now, remember, he is writing to the, the, the family of God in Rome. Okay. And so he's making this point about what Christ has done for the Gentiles and even himself that he was called to the Gentiles. He was called as an emissary to you and me if we are not, uh, well, I'm not, Jewish by birth. Okay, so we're reminded here, praise the Lord. We're reminded here, sing praises to him. And then we're reminded that God gives us hope. We just read that the scriptures give us encouragement and endurance. And so here, Paul reminds us that God does give hope. So if you're in a situation right now and you are not, just ask God, God, give me hope. I'm not feeling hopeful right now, God, help me. And then he'll also, he's the same God that gives you joy and peace. Why or when? When you trust, you have to trust through him through faith right? So that's, those are all the things we've learned just by reading what Paul wrote all these thousands of years ago. Okay, so we continue on. And then that last statement, then your hope will overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. Man, that's just worth this whole study time right now. Um, We are just in times and you might be listening to this and I pray that your hope will overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, you know, there's just, uh, we look at the tone of what, how Paul is writing um, and what he's saying here. And so this is a note, I believe this is from the Cultural Background Study Bible. And here's the quote, those offering letters of advice or speeches of exhortation frequently expressed in their their confidence in their addresses. This expression helped the readers to listen more favorably to the rest of the letter and sometimes served as a polite way to make a request to instruct. The Greek term can also mean to admonish. This was considered gentler than rebuke. And by delegating the task to them, Paul avoids appearing to reprove them. And again, that's from the Cultural Background Study Bible. Um, Paul's comment here, it reminds us of the importance of gaining knowledge and then using our knowledge to teach others. Notice that this statement is for all believers. So I want you to think about that as we read the next few verses. Paul is going to talk about his work. Verse 14, my brothers and sisters, I am sure or fully convinced that you are indeed full of goodness. I know that you have all the knowledge you need or the literal translation are filled with all knowledge and that you are able to teach or in other words, here's some synonyms, instruct, admonish or warn each other. Verse 15, but I have written to you every openly or boldly about some things, points, parts, I wanted you to remember. So with that, I want you to highlight full of goodness. I know that you have all the knowledge you need. And so if you're listening to me under the sound of my voice, you are full of goodness. And yes, even if you know, if you're saved, Hey, that's the knowledge you need to be able to help someone else. God will bring, remember that Ethiopian official, that person to you who has what he's placed in you. You do not have to go to seminary or have a degree to be able to teach someone else. So Paul is instructing us here. And I want to encourage you, you are able to teach. You are able to teach. And so let's look at that term goodness. And we're going to look at this again in Strong's Concordance, and that's G19, the Greek word in this scripture for goodness. 
And so you can go on the Bible Hub and some other places, blueletterbible.com will allow you to do this. Even if you go to BibleGateway.com and you click on um, Mounces, M-O-U-N-C-E, I believe, his translation will also, you click on the word and it will give you the actual Strong's um, word. And so when we think of goodness, this is what it means. Uprightness of heart. Look at that and life, goodness, or kindness. And then you see some other comments on there. And so you could pause the video and jot some of this down in your journal and think about that. You know, what does it mean, God? Uprightness of heart and life. Because Paul just said, we are full of that. I am saying to you, you are full of that, full of goodness. Now, does that mean we're perfect? No, not necessarily. That just means that we believe by faith that the goodness of God abides on the inside of us. So let's talk. I'm sending a, a Sila message your way. Here is the question for the moment. And again, I encourage you to pause and you can journal this. How can we be full of goodness? I may have given you some hints already, but how can we be full of goodness? You know, Paul said it. So it has to be, if he said it, you know, if he said that to those, the kingdom, his kingdom family in Rome, then how can we really be full of goodness? So again, pause the video if you'd like and ask the Holy Spirit to give you or lead and guide you in that answer. And so let's continue with the verse. I did this because God gave me this special gift or of the grace God gave me. Verse 16, to be a minister or servant of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. I serve God or hear some synonyms or perform priestly service by teaching his good news for the good news the gospel of or about God. That's what the good news is. So that the Gentiles or the nations could be an offering that God would accept, an offering made holy. Here's the synonym, sanctified, purified by what? The Holy Spirit. Man, that's good. And if you are a Gentile or if you're a Jew, that applies to all of us. So a highlight on this, on this verse or these set of verses to be a minister, the servant of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. We are so grateful that Paul on that Damascus road, that he didn't run the other way, but that he said, I will take up this mantle. I will take up this assignment for a nation of people that I don't even know. So again, we just highlight to be a minister or a servant of Christ Jesus. Let's continue reading verse 17. So I am proud. I have reason to boast of what I've done for God in Christ Jesus. Now, remember, this is Paul writing this letter. Now, verse 18, I will not dare talk about anything except what Christ has done through me and leading the Gentiles to obey God. They have obeyed God because of what I've said and done. Verse 19, because of the power of miracles, or in other words, signs, and the great things they saw, or in other words, the wonders or the marvels that they saw. And because of or accomplished through the power of the spirit of God. So I love this, you know, because a lot of times I heard someone say, you know, something about false sense of uh, pride, humility you know, a false sense of humility. Paul is saying here that there's nothing wrong to be proud of when God is using you for his kingdom. And he's saying, I'm proud of what God, what I've done for God. You know, it's okay to, to say, as long as we acknowledge, because here Paul is acknowledging the powers of God. It's not of himself. And then verse 19, Paul's comment here reminds us of the importance of gaining knowledge and then using that knowledge, right? We use that knowledge. We use that knowledge. And he says in verse 19, because of the power, 
because of the miracle, because of the great things, because of the power of the spirit of God, we're using that knowledge of God to be reminded that, hey, I, you know, Paul says, I dare not I speak of anything other than what Christ has done through me. Man, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. And so we just need to be encouraged from him and from these scriptures and what he's saying to us. So let's continue. I have finished my work of preaching, fulfilled my commission to preach or fully preach the good news or the gospel from Jerusalem all the way around to Illyricum. So here's a comment. This is a Illyricum is a Roman province northwest of Macedonia. That's modern Albania, Serbia, and Montenegro. Okay, so that's just a good comment for you to know where Illyricum was. So verse 20. So in this way, I always want or try or make it my ambition to preach the good news in places where people have never heard of Christ. Or if we were to see the literal translation, it would read Christ has not been named. Let's continue because I do not want or in order not to build on the work someone else has already started or the foundation of others, but or just as it is written in the scriptures. So here we highlight, I have finished my work. I have finished my work and Paul's work was to preach And so when you hear this, think about, you know, finishing your work. And so you get a moment to to do a sila on that. And then again, to preach what? To preach the good news. Now, Paul doesn't say you have to be a preacher to preach the good news, right? You can preach the good news just because you have, you know what the good news is about. You are saying that I don't have to be qualified or go through seminary to preach or to tell someone else the good news of God. What does that really actually mean? And so let's continue. Those who were not told about him will see and those who have not heard about him will understand. Again, Paul is writing and he's using the Old Testament scriptures in his letter to the kingdom in Rome, to the kingdom of, of family, his family, kingdom family in Rome. Okay, so that just shows us something too, how powerful God's word is and that we don't have to talk really to come up with too many of our own words. We just allow, allow the scriptures to do the talking. So let's continue. Paul's plan to visit Rome. This is the reason I was stopped or hindered, or delayed many times from coming to you. Okay, let's pause there. What reason is that? He's saying, because earlier we read that I don't want to build on another person's foundation. You know, he wanted to actually preach where the Christ had not been heard. You know, those who hadn't heard about Christ, that's where Paul wanted to preach. So let's continue with verse 23. Um, Literally, we would see but, but in this version, we see now I have finished my work here. Or literally, it would read no more place to work in these regions. So again, that gives us the reason. Continuing, since for many years I have wanted to come to you, verse 24, I hope to visit you while passing through on my way to Spain. After I enjoy being with you for a while, I hope you can help or assist support me on my trip. Now I am going to Jerusalem to help, how? To minister to or provide a service for God's people, in other words, the saints. Okay, so highlight, I have finished my work. Now, remember, Paul is saying here when he's writing this letter, he's in Corinth and he's on his way to Spain. And he's saying, hey, I got to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to stop by and I'm going to stop by and hopefully I can visit you also in 
Rome. And then he's going to explain to us why he's actually going to Jerusalem to minister, to provide a service for the saints. But before we do, let's pause for a moment and talk. Let's see, La. And I want you to think about this next question. Okay, based on the scriptures you just read, here's the question. What work or assignment is God calling you to finish? Now, for some of you, he may be calling you to start something. Or for some of you, you might not know. And that is okay. My goodness, if you knew how long it took me. (laughs) But the bottom line is, are we seeking to know the assignment? And if we do know, are we seeking to finish it? And or have we um, run away from the assignment? You know, did a Jonah ended up in the belly of of a whale? (laughs) Right. So those are just something that some things that we need to think about. And remember, he says, you don't come. We don't compare ourselves among ourselves. You have been uniquely gifted to do the work. That's what God what what, uh, Paul said. He said, I've been given the grace. You know, that gives us an uh, opportunity to learn that grace is not just, you know, grace where God doesn't punish us, but grace can also mean the ability or the strength. So God has given you the grace to finish, just like Paul. So let's just continue here with verse 26. The believers in Macedonia, that's northern Greece, and Achaia, that's southern Greece, were happy or they were pleased, or they were resolved to give their money to help. How? To make a contribution to. And you'll find that in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 1 through 4, and 2 Corinthians verses 8 through 9. Give to who? Give to the poor among God's people, the saints at Jerusalem. So here's a note. Every year, Jewish men throughout the world paid half a shekel tax for the temple in Jerusalem. Trusted messengers would carry it to Jerusalem. So Paul was one of those trusted messengers that's carrying this contribution to the saints at Jerusalem. And then he goes on in these next verses, he's going to give us more details about, you know, this contribution. So let's look at verse 27. They were happy, or in other words, they were pleased, they were resolved to do this. And really they owe it or are debtors to them, to to who? He's getting ready to explain it to us. These Gentiles have shared in the Jews' spiritual blessing So they should use their material possessions or blessings to help the Jews to render service to them. So I want to pause right there because even myself, it it, it has to be a teaching moment for us. It's in the scriptures. A lot of times, a lot of people, pastors, bishops now, you know, keep in mind, we don't want to uh, contribute or sow our seed on, on bad ground. But Paul himself is saying, Here with this example, when we've been blessed spiritually, we return that materially using our possessions. Yes, and there are times in our life when we might not have it, and I get it. But when we do, you know, those times you might use your time. But here he's specifically saying he's carrying material possessions back to help the Jews who were poor. I'm sorry, the family or those the believers located in Jerusalem who were poor. So let's continue with verse 28. It would say literally, therefore, or after I have completed this collection and delivered the money. See, there's no doubt here. We're not talking about nothing, no spiritual blessing. Delivered the money safely to them. Or in other words, it would read, if we translated this, sealed this fruit for them. This was an uncertain idiom likely indicating secure packaging or safe arrival of cargo. So Paul is saying, hey, I've sealed this fruit for them and nothing going to happen to this. I'm going to Jerusalem and I'm going to bring this money. And then he ends it with saying, I will leave for Spain and stop and visit you. Okay, so as we continue on, let's just look at verse 29. I know that when I come to you, I will bring Christ." Full blessing, or Christ will richly bless our time together. 
Now, translated, it would read, I will come in the fullness of Christ's blessing. Okay, continuing on, verse 30. Brothers and sisters, I beg, or in other words, urge or encourage you to help. How? Join, strive together with me in my work here. Check this out. How do we help? By praying to God for me. So let me pause for a minute. We are to pray. That's why we're called to pray for our leaders and those who labor over us and watch over us, our spirits. For instance, pray for me as you know, we deliver this. We, we have an enemy that seeks to sift us like wheat. And there is nothing like the intercession of the saints. So let's continue. Do this because of our Lord Jesus and the love that the Holy Spirit gives us. Literally, it would read of the Spirit. So Paul tells us why you ought to pray, why we ought to pray for each other. Why? Because of the love the Lord Jesus and that the Holy Spirit has given us. You know, that's why we do it. So let's look at verse 31. Pray that I will be saved. Listen to Paul. How? Rescued, delivered from the non-believers in Judea, and that this help I bring, or in other words, my ministry, my service to Jerusalem will please, or in other words, be acceptable to, or be well received by God's people, the saints there. So what did we highlight here by praying to God for me? And that, that he says again, pray, pray what? that I'll be saved. So this demonstrates the power. This is what I wrote when I was studying. This demonstrates the power of intercession. This also reminds us that the reason we intercede for others is because of the love of the Holy Spirit within us. You know, so we have to ask ourselves, if we're never praying for anybody, then something might be a little off. Just saying. All right. And so we end this chapter with verse 32 and 33. Then if God wants me to, by God's will, I will come to you with joy and together you and I will have a time of rest. Be refreshed. Now may the God who gives peace be with you all. Amen. Okay, so we are back to our place where we can review. Now, you can review the entire uh, chapter. You can go back over your notes. You can reread. You can read tomorrow. You know, another good thing to do is you can go on and, you know, search other YouTube videos and just do the audio Bible. There will be an audio Bible available for you to read so that even after you study, you can just put it in your ear and just listen to it over and over. Or you can go um, use your like you version Bible app or something like that to just keep hearing that same chapter over and over and over again. That's how we sow the word deep. Again, remember now those plans where you read the Bible in a year, if you're just starting out as a baby Christian, that's a good way to start. But if you want to go deeper in the word, don't be in a rush. Don't be on a calendar. Just take your time and just go through those chapters. You might stay in a chapter for two weeks. So it's really how God and the Holy Spirit Spirit is leading you. So we're going to look back for our review. We're going to just base our review on verses 13 through 14. So what can we pull out from that? First, God gives us hope. That's, that's an, I mean, I could shout on that one verse. And, and also what can we pull out of that? Number two, God will fill us with joy and peace, joy and peace. And then three, we trust God through our faith in him. Number four, our hope can overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. And then because of our life in Christ, we are filled with the goodness of God. Remember that song we sang? You know, all my life you have been faithful. I don't want to go in on you because I'll start all over again. So we are just remember that we are filled with the goodness of God. And then we have all the knowledge we need 
in order to teach and warn an, uh, others. And again, we don't have to go to seminary for that. I mean, there's it's okay. It's good if God called you to that. But whatever you have, you just reach and you teach someone else. You know, look for the Ethiopian official in your life who's looking for more and more understanding of God's word. So what's your reaction to all this? You know, when we hear God's word, it ought to, we, I would hear my old, uh, one of my old, my old churches or uh, my leader, he would say, I came to provoke you to change. And so I hope there, there is a, a change that's begun on, in all of us. So I have a good reaction every time, most times when I read God's word, unless I'm being corrected or rebuked in a way, it's a little difficult, but go ahead and scan my code and see um, what sense or what emotions I'm actually happy, happy. And I'm hoping you ha- you're having some good ones too. And so as we wrap this up, we're reminded in his word, the book of the law. We're not just talking about the Old Testament. We're talking about the whole counsel of God. He says in Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. That's why I told you, don't be in a rush. Take your time. Why? So that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Now we put it in context. We already know we couldn't do all that was written in it. That's why we have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But what is the universal truth? We shall meditate day and night so that when we do fall short, we have the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ himself to help us out. And so just that remembrance, knowing that God came, he gave his only begotten son that in him, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I love this scene because one thing I noted when I read uh, this chapter, when it talked about Jesus being resurrected, it said that the, the napkin was carefully folded. So go ahead and read that actually in your your Bible. But those of you who are not saved, this is the salvation invitation. Jesus got up. He got up on your behalf. And so if you are not saved, all you have to do is repeat after me and say, Heavenly Father, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. God, I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. And because of that, today, God, I am saved. God, I believe it in my heart and it results in my justification. And I'm confessing it with my mouth openly and it results in my salvation. And then God, you also said, according to your word, that whoever believes in, adheres to, trusts in, and relies on him will not be disappointed. God, thank you that there's no distinction between me or the Jew or the Gentile, for the same Lord is Lord over us all. And God, I confess that right now, because I call on the name of the Lord, I am am saved. So if you have said that prayer, you are saved. The angels are rejoicing and I am rejoicing with you. Be mindful now that you have started your first day, just like with Paul. Pray for yourself. Pray to God. Pray for others. Just pray. And why do we pray? We pray because we have the love of Jesus and what he's done for us. We intercede on behalf of others as well as praying for ourselves. So here we just recognize God and all that he's done for us. I hope you have been blessed. I come into agreement with you, the third John one and two life that all things beloved, I wish above all else that thou mayest prosper and be in good health. How? even as thy soul prospers. So God, we thank you today for causing our soul to prosper as we read and understand by the power of your Holy Spirit what the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 15. Help us keep in step with your will, God, and your ordained plan for our lives. Have your way in, for, and through us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Amen. And so we end with the blessing of God. May Yahweh watch over you. May he bless you. May he smile and be kind to you. May he look on you and give you with favor and give you peace. And so as we always end, we are reminded that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and in all your getting, get understanding. And so this always leads us to a shout, to a hallelujah, and to a praise. He, God, deserves all the praise. And so right there where you are under the sound of my voice, go ahead and extol him, lift him up, and exalt him for being God of gods. Remember Haggadah, the great God, El Haggadah, the great God, the God of all God, mighty in all power and in all strength. In Jesus' name we pray, be blessed and amen. Amen.